I do want to talk about the selection show, Ernie, because there was a yeah. lot of criticism about it. I actually, really? you want? <laughs> <laughs> I actually liked um, you getting to the uh, meat uh, of of who's in and who's out first, because I could never tell whose bubble was popped just by merely having the brackets revealed. I, I, I am wondering how that criticism was received. Ernie. I think it's always uh, received by who? By I guess uh, you, by by you and the rest of the team there. By me, I mean I. You know, I, I think that um, any time you're going to tinker with something like the selection show, uh, you're going to open yourself up to that, and that's not unexpected. Uh, but I think it was also a response, uh, you know, to previous years sometimes where it took too long to get all the information out. So I think that was. That was the uh, the number one thing. Is just let get, let's get the teams out there. Let's let everybody know who's in there. And and in the first forty minutes of the show, uh, we had everything out there. We had every bracket out there, and we had uh, you know all sixty eight teams in the first you know fifteen minutes of the show. So uh, in, in terms of that, that's that's fine. And then and then if if you don't like alphabetical order, okay, that's you know here's the thing everybody's going to listen to this and and nobody's living in a in a bubble and saying oh no that's perfect that can't be changed no they the folks who who put that together um always take into account what the fan wants and so uh you know that's let everybody have their say that's fine we expect that and then uh, and try to make the next one better than than the previous one and always try to get always try to make the next one better well like i said i would never be able to tell just by watching the brackets be revealed in the old style way whose bubble burst until you just saw it on a screen hey by the way now that you know where the brackets are these are the five teams that that didn't uh, that didn't get selected. So uh, and uh, I'm I'm not one of those to be honest with you who was critical of, uh, of of it. And I've really enjoyed the coverage immensely. We have had Candace Parker on yesterday. I just love all the different voices that you and Greg Gumbel have been uh, expertly, uh, mostly. It's been the two of you guys uh, hosting. And then tonight you're on with Charles and the rest of the crew in in Atlanta. Where who's on tonight? Well, well actually. Uh, again, we split it up. In, right. in, in New York is Greg Gumbel with uh, Charles and Kenny and okay. Clark. And mm-hmm. then I'm down here with Seth Davis and Brendan Haywood and Candace and Greg Marshall from Wichita State. Ah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, it's it's a very, you know, when you look at it, and folks may not have any idea how this all comes together, and I, and, and I shake my head sometimes wondering how it all gets done, because especially in those, those first couple of days, there were so many shows on four networks constantly, mm-hmm. and you're just told, okay, you're doing halftime on True TV now, okay, and then be ready to turn around and do the between game show on CBS, and then after that, you got halftime on TNT, and then you're going to bring C- – uh, TBS on the air. I mean, it's it, it's that way nonstop for so those two fun. days. So exciting. So now that it's slowed down a little bit, it's a little more manageable, and basically they're handling the CBS games tonight, and we're handling the TBS games tonight. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.